Welcome to the show. The Airborne State Governor David Umayi and his uh, Deputy Eric Igwe have asked the Court of Appeal to set aside the judgment of a federal high court which removed them from office. They raised eight grounds of appeal including Section 308 of the Constitution which they claim provided them with immunity from civil or criminal proceedings. Now Umayi at a press conference had referred to the judgment against him by Justice Inyang Eko as a uh, court purchased and uh, said he is still in charge. But the Nigerian Bar Association in a statement condemned in strong terms the governor's vituperation against the person and judgment of Justice Echo and demanded that he apologize. Well, the Ebony State Governor acceded to the NBA's request and tendered an unreserved apology to the Nigerian Bar Association and the Nigerian judiciary over his comments. Umayi said the comments he made against the judge were aimed at the PDP lawyers whom he accused of misleading the judge to grant the judgment. Well, on an issue that has divided even several senior advocates of Nigeria, I have been joined uh, by Dr. West Idahosa, a senior advocate of Nigeria, former member of the House of Representatives, and uh, I mean, it's a legal luminary that a lot of persons are so happy to always be around with because you have an enriching experience in Parliament and then, of course, you're always in the courts. Let's talk about Thank how you this much. judgment has divided even senior advocates like yourself. Uh, should there have been a court case against the governor and his deputy in the first instance? Although some people have said that for the lawmakers, yes, there seems to be some uh, reason for that. But for the governor and the, the, the deputy, uh, they are saying that Section 308 is not one that should have been tampered with at all. Well, you see, as you rightly said, uh, professional opinion severely divided on these matters. But the point is, in democracy, there is always a moment of creative tension. And one of the ways to ventilate this tension is litigation. Yeah. There has been a lot of people who held a view all along that people ought not to defect with a mandate uh, of a political party. This has been on. But you see, the Constitution framers have been very careful to use their words. In Section 68G of the Constitution, they were clear on what they expected from a lawmaker. They included in it that a lawmaker who defected from one party to another, unless, of course, he was in a party that had divided nationally, as interpreted by when you talk about division or where a major of separate political parties have occurred, he will of course be punished by forfeiture of that seat. But if you look through the length and breadth of the Constitution of Nigeria, you won't find a similar provision with respect to those who hold the offices of Mr. President, the Vice President, the Governor, and the Deputy Governor. And now, because constitutionalism is as solid as a Lumorok. It's not to be shaken. It is not to be <laughs> taken for granted. Not even the courts would tamper with the weddings of the Constitution. Remember the conditions for amending it. It's rigorous. Even after you get it to Ted from the National Assembly, you have to still have the endorsement of 24 assemblies. It means that it's a serious matter. In some instances for fifth. <laughs> yes, in some <laughs> instances for talk. fifth. So it's a big deal. So now what is excluded cannot be included by your imagination or by your interpretation. So this is what, where the problem lies. Now, in the Atiku Abubakar case, the Attorney General of Nigeria versus Atiku, I, which I still consider the locus classicus, the complete light that Onoge, CJN as he was, was explicit. He made it clear. He dealt with defection of an executive office holder, elected executive office holder, as in this case. He said that, and I paraphrase him, that look, there was nothing in that constitution which prescribed any form of punishment by way of loss of office. He went on to say that the conditions to lose office are clearly stated. Gaining office is one thing, and losing the office is another. You can gain office by 
being sponsored by a political party. But the problem is, once you enter there, you are clothed by statutory flavor. Yeah, so you Get. no longer belong no, no, to no, that not, institution be, alone no, of political you, party. You become a special. Be translated. Special, special. Interesting. A specially remodified official personality that can no longer be pushed from pillar to post. So leaving that office becomes a function of the definition of the law, which is set out clearly you know, from section 180, 181, you will see it there. So 177 talks about qualification, what qualifies you to be a governor, and so on and so forth. So, it, but there, should there have been a suit against no, no, these two in, no, in, in, very individuals good. or offices? The right to go to court is one of the rights that citizens enjoy. And the right to get judgments or right to judgment belongs to the court. You cannot tell Nigerian citizens or citizens of any nation in the world not to go to court. More so, don't forget that political parties will continue to agitate. Opportunism and politics very often go together. Setting political traps for each other happens in pseudo politics, the type we play in this country. So now, I am saying clearly that although they went to court, many of them predicted the outcome. It was like casting a net in the water. So they added both the governor, the deputy governor, and then the, the lawmakers. They definitely knew at that time that that net would not come out empty. As far as I know, as far as the lawmakers are concerned, they may have to work harder. Because it seemed to be having legal issues now founded on the Constitution. They will have to work so hard to come out of that net. Now, as far as the governor and the deputy are concerned, in my view, I would like to distinguish this from what happened in Amechi and Amehia, which everyone talks about. Where, yeah, I mean, um, I mean, where, 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 where the, the where classical, the, yeah, the, yeah, the, the votes actually court, belong to yeah, the, the political court party. Talks about. But we've seen the Supreme Court also debating in yeah. several judgments yeah. and now the, saying that the votes actually belong to the individual yeah. and not the party as an institution. How yeah. do we put all of this together? Yes, in Amechi and Amehia, the Supreme Court talked about votes belonging to political parties and it used that as a methodology in getting Amici into office. And I think as a reaction to that, the National Assembly, and I'm sure I was still there at that time, decided to include a clause in the Electoral Act. Yeah, I remember in 2010, uh, yeah, Electoral I, Act Amendment, yes, where it and was then of specifically course, included. Of, also, of course, constitutional amendment, which was brought in yeah. to say that, look, you cannot, or no account should the court declare you winner of an election if you have not participated in, in every, every stage uh, of the process. Now, since that inclusion, the decisions have been changing because they have to capture what is the law. So once that void is filled, of course you will expect that the court's position will also change. So I'm not surprised that the courts are re reacting to the new law in force. Now, now uh, sorry to just cut you mm. in. The People's Democratic Party has announced people, based on this judgment, mm. that are supposed to fill the positions of Governor David Umayi and his yeah. deputy. And I even hear that even in Zamfara right now, yeah. they are planning to replace Go uh, Governor Matawale and his deputy based on this judgment and yes. then go back to court. Now, these individuals never took part in the electoral process. Yeah. Can they benefit from this judgment based on the uh, what we have on ground, because this judgment, whether we like it or not, is what subsists at the moment. Yeah, but I've just told you the provisions of the Constitution. If you say the Electoral Act is well, is weaker legislation, what about the Constitution of Nigeria? And in any case, the order came with an order that I make. You withdraw the certificate of return. In, unless that event occurs, there will be no vacancy for anyone to fill. Now, what will be INA's exposition? to the withdrawal of the certificate of return. Don't forget that as we speak, the Boeing government still has a judgment from a Boeing state, which seems to have gone the other way around. Yes. And then the Federal High Court uh, get went the other way. So you have which are courts of coordinate co jurisdiction. Yes, no one really can bind the other. They, are, they can both persuade each other, but so far they remain unpersuaded. I'm not <laughs> too sure. Yes. What they did. Yeah. So the question would be, will INEC withdraw the certificate of return? In, will they not? 
I think their position will likely be well. Let's yeah, they said they are still studying. Yes, it. let's study. <laughs> they always study. Let's study. The real truth is that they will probably be waiting for an appellate decision mm -hmm. on this matter. So I still think the latitude for the governor to retain office, uh, both electorally in terms of administration by INEC and judicially. Because once you go to the Court of Appeal and you ask for temporary intervention, the courts will always act with caution. Okay. Right. But I want us to interrogate this. Mm -hmm. At what point in time does a political party's function end and then a candidate emerges and then he becomes a public office holder mm -hmm. and he's clothed with a different clothing from that he was wearing when he was a political party member conversing for votes as a candidate? Well, the truth is that once you are elected, you metamorphose from that party candidate that party men and women were singing Hosanna for to a public officer, one that is now bound by the code of public conduct uh, for officers who have been publicly elected or appointed. Now, so you see that metamorphosis is critical. It's something that political parties and the public must understand. When carrying out their acts or omissions, they have to know that this fellow as the Christians would say, have become born again. Let's <laughs> assume the new toga is not the same man that you knew before taking the oath of office that he has become after taking the oath of office. Well, here we have a judge actually saying that yeah. he believes that the political party yeah. still owns all the votes that came to the candidate. Well, Shouldn't we have a situation whereby some people voted for the candidate just because of the candidate, not because it belongs to a political party? Well, the thing is that there's no... On election day. In my view, there's nowhere in the Constitution where that is... Where that's an interpretation mm -hmm. that has been given that is subject to appellate scrutiny. Yeah. And that will take place soon. And I'm not going to comment on that. Mm -hmm. Now, my point is political parties will always take advantage of situations. So it's always best for the politicians to begin to redefine their attitude, you know, in respect of how they carry themselves within the political space in Nigeria. Perhaps all of us, me inclusive, should begin to warn ourselves of less locomotive, you know, <laughs> <laughs> in the business of jumping from pillar to post, post yeah. because we are beginning to see yeah, that. Yeah, because I mean, well, what, from what I understand now, you're saying that there's also a decorum that comes oh, with yeah. being a public officer. Straight away. Especially when it comes to your political activities. I agree but with When you. the political vehicle you came into had issues, yeah. well, there's also the temptation on the politician to want to jump ship. Yeah, yeah so the political <laughs> class need behavior modification. Okay, that, very that, interested. That, that uh, we have to go for a short break. When we come back, we'll continue the conversation. You're still watching the Horizon interview. The conversation continues with my guest, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, Honorable West Dahosa, still with us. Welcome back to the Arise interview. I'm Somna Sambo, and my guest is still the senior advocate of Nigeria, former member of the House of Representatives, Dr. West Idahosa, and we've been taking a critical look at the judgment uh, concerning a boy in state and some issues uh, pertaining that. Now, doctor, let's talk about this judgment coming up, and then a lot of persons were confused as to whether they shouldn't have been another person sworn in immediately by now. This is uh, a few days after, and yet the governor is still there, his deputy is still there, and then even the lawmakers, while well, INEC is still studying all of this, a lot of people are anxious. Some are saying that the, government, the governor, Governor Omahi, and his deputy should still continue, while some have said that the, the court judgment expressly asked for the governor to be excused from that position and for a new person to be sworn in along his deputy. And that's why the PDP, in obedience to the court judgment, nominated persons to both the office of governor of Ebony State and deputy. How do you read all of this? Should we wait longer or the institutions that are charged with swearing in a new governor should go ahead and do so? Well, even the PDP lawyers know that there is a process uh, in implementing court orders. They also know there's also a procedure for challenging court judgments. 
And once you set that motion in place and secure the appropriate intervention and orders to maintain the rest or protect the status quo, as we say in law, it will be difficult for you to expect that because another has been made, the other will be implemented, even when the same laws provide for a method to challenge. Yeah, I'm asking you this yeah. because mm -hmm. a senior lawyer said, mm -hmm. even though Governor Imai files a stay of uh, execution of this judgment, mm -hmm. files a notice mm -hmm. for stay of execution of this judgment, mm -hmm. that that judgment still has to be obeyed. Well, that the, it's not, the, the court can continue hearing the stay a uh, motion for the sale of execution while the swearing in goes on. No, well, it's not as simple as that. First and foremost, don't forget that there's an incumbent governor. Yeah. And then you have a situation where you have two judgments we have already said. Yeah. All right, it comes to what INEC does. There has to be a, a fresh certificate of return. There must be one issued. You cannot assume office. With what are you going to be sworn in? Without a certificate of return? What does the electoral law say? What is the electoral convention all, all over the world? Who issues the, a certificate of return? You cannot say the umpire. You cannot play, I mean, Chelsea versus United. You have award penalties to yourself. You take the shots. You declare the goal. I mean, that's not the way it's done. So I think it is uh, either by, over, over excitement about change or anger about the old order. That can, that, <laughs> Very that, interesting. Yeah, that can now, uh, well, let's look at the issue of Zamfara State, which is similar. The yeah. judge in that other, the Federal High Court judge in that other case mm. said that uh, he, he dismissed it yeah. because he doesn't want to even hear it because it's not a pre-election matter mm. and neither is it a post-election matter. Mm. He said the court doesn't have jurisdiction to listen to it and he pushed it aside. He also said that there is no way expressly written in the 1999 Constitution or the Electoral Act that a governor can lose his seat without following the provisions that are written there or by mere defection. So in all of this, why do we have what looks like contradictory judgment from the same courts of coordinate jurisdiction? Well, the thing is, judges are the first line apostles of the law and they are humans. So when they make decisions, the system provides for such decisions to be tested. Okay. And that's why you have appellate courts. We've lost several trials and to go, go to the appellate levels to reverse them. I mean, that's very common. Sometimes you find a situation where a judge reaches a decision to say, oh, uh, we, I don't have a jurisdiction. Why will a judge, in my view, for example, not have jurisdiction to determine a constitutional question? The Supreme Court has always said, the Constitution is supreme. Any individual that approaches the court to determine whether there has been a constitutional breach or to even interpret the applicability of the constitution is is a prime time invitation to the court to make a pronouncement and the pronouncement has been made yeah that pronouncement <laughs> that was made that and by way of dismissal is the opinion of the judges is an evaluation of the facts for him but that he has no jurisdiction it's a difficult decision for me to accept. He will definitely have that jurisdiction. Very Indeed, he had one, and that is why he was making the additional pronouncements, such as, I don't see why this should happen, and so on and so forth. Uh, uh, interesting development, yeah. indeed. Now, let's look at uh, Governor Omahi's vituperation against the judge. I mean, it, it, judges are not known to speak yeah. in the public. Yes. Uh, instead, others speak for them. That's why you have the MBA also speaking for them and all of that. Should a governor who also holds a very powerful position and is clothed in the robe of a very strong public office holder, like you had said earlier, yeah. be making such comments, considering that he also derives his power from the same law that empowers the judge to make his pronouncement. Well, I, 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 from his quick apology, let me assume that he was led into error by the momentary anger. Yeah. But people <laughs> must always understand that nothing good comes from anger. Mm. Remember always that you must respect the institutions of state. And so his apology, and I hope that uh, he must have expressed that widely, and that will now be left for the MBA uh, to consider and, uh, and accept. So I think that should overtake all that. Or that ordinarily, he has accepted that it's a condemning, condemnable behavior. Otherwise, if he has stuck to his, his guns, then one would have taken a very caustic approach to this matter. Okay. Uh, the good thing here is that we have room for appeal yeah. and all of that. And uh, 
by the governor's uh, uh, <laughs> statement, you know, apologizing. Yeah. We just hope that when he goes to the appeal, mm -hmm. um, he will also have to contain his anger when the uh, decision of the court of appeal also comes comes right. up. Now, let's go into other areas. Now, we have the constitution review that has been ongoing at the National Assembly. I want to pick your ideas on some of those critical legislations that have been uh, put in place. I mean, this time around, we saw bills uh, uh, being uh, you know, brought in that empowers the state. We've seen uh, local government autonomy, judicial independence in terms of finances, to the state judiciary and all of that. What do you make of that constitution exercise? Because we are a former parliamentarian. Yes, and one who participated in those exercises. Yeah. First, let me say that as a student of constitutional history, I do not know of any nation's constitution that have become a plating every year. I don't know of anyone. Yeah, I mean, so for every tenure so, of the National yeah, Assembly, there's always a constitutional I, review. I, I do not know of any as tampered with as the Nigerian constitution. Now, but the irony is, even in tampering with it, they are unable to deal with the core issues that confront our daily life, that affect our national unity, peace, and good governance. These are areas that never get solutions. They continue to deal with, look, let's talk about the local government uh, autonomy. You can't be talking about that at the same time you are maintaining a joint account. Although they abolished it this no, time no, around. No, 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 no. You see, <laughs> don't forget that these bills are going to be subject to the ratification by 24 assemblies. It has never been. The problem really has never been with NAS. Do the returns come? We have seen assemblies voting against the autonomy in the past. Not to talk about local governments. In fact, in many states, I don't want to mention names, the system of local governments which is constitutionally guaranteed, is prostrate. So administrators, despite Supreme Court admonition, despite this Court of Appeal, frequent judgments, many state governments have remained adamant to recognition of this guarantee of this particular system. So sometimes when we see these bills come up, we pray that one day the governors will agree that some level of progress be made. Very interesting yeah. because they continue to hold uh, very uh, strong powers over uh, the uh, state yes. lawmakers and all of that. Right. Now let's talk about uh, the whole exercise. It looks like restructuring through the back door. I mean, states are being allowed to operate electricity companies, and then you have the issues of railways, and then you have the issues of um, you know correctional centers, and then you know it goes on and on. Do you think that? Uh, this is revolutionary in terms of uh, governance, our system of governance. If states are being given these powers, and then the issues of VAT, for example, I mean, it wasn't in included in the exclusive list. Do you think all of this will promote good governance if we shift more things from the exclusive list to the concurrent list? I, I think what is happening is economic reformation without tampering with the core political system. Right? <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, it's what is going on. Oh, you can maintain railways if you want, you can operate electricity if you want. These are basic rights that many states ought to have had from the beginning. But is that the real core of these quarrels that often happen? What about the derivation? How do you share public funds? And how do you even and make the how funds? How do you make the money? Mm -hmm. Who is entitled to what comes out from Papa's land? <laughs> these issues are <laughs> being papered over. All right? A state will have to first generate funds to be able to operate its own electricity anyway. And so that wasn't they're touched? They're not touched. There are many states that can barely pay salaries. All right? And such states cannot even be dreaming of starting their own electricity outfits. So the question is, if there are states that are so weak, why not allow them to be guided in development by stronger states, by, by joint state deals? It happens all over. When China was evolving as an economic power, the weaker states were given to the main states. They had these alliances. They were being taught how to do it. 
Very yeah. interesting indeed. Yes. As we try to round off this conversation, we saw the National Assembly reaching an agreement with uh, President Muhammad Buhari to amend one of the sections of the Electoral Act. It that they, yeah, it. yeah. And all of a sudden, mm. he got to the Senate and they threw it out. Mm. And the House of Representatives were even making, you know, talks about it, whether they won't even agree to discuss it and all of that. What do you make of all of well, this? That, 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 that's a, a Doesn't it look like a breach of agreement between uh, both uh, arms of well, government? Well, I'm not, too, I'm not too sure what agreement was reached, but that's a political issue uh, that was approached politically. Mm -hmm. Do not forget it's central to 2023 mm -hmm. because for, for the lawmakers, uh, they have the advantage of vying in office, uh, but they don't have access to the paraphernalia of power that those who hold the executive offices yeah. uh, have. So for the executive office holders who wish to go into this arena, the game is strip yourself bare. Come in with your hands <laughs> and be like us. Yeah, and be like us. <laughs> Don't come with any advantage. No. So that's the thing. So if you tell them, remove that, they will simply be looking at you. When they get to their floor, they will do what they have to do and they have done the needful. Yeah, I mean, it's a power it game. was a resounding no yes. on the floor of yeah, the Because Senate. it involves, it involves power. Mm -hmm. Okay, control yeah, of because, power. Because ministers, commissioners, yeah. essays, and all of yeah. that will have a better advantage over much the more, legislator much at more, any day, any time. Much more. Imagine running <laughs> primaries as okay. minister of XYZ. And then you know what that means. You know what that means. All right. We yeah. must thank you so much, Dr. Wesley Dahosa. He's a legislator, a senior advocate of Nigeria. So many things put in one. We must thank you for being on thank the show to provide much. clarity as to the court judgment that came out from Ebony State and what may likely happen at the appellate court and all of that. And then giving us insight into the Constitution Amendment and Electoral Act that just came into being. <music>